Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about deterministic finite automata. This is our first class about, deter, uh, about our finite automata subject. In our previous classes, in order to understand the concepts, we discussed a few concepts and examples in our previous classes. So based on that, you will understand what's finite automata and what's deterministic finite automata means. So please follow our playlist from the beginning. Please watch the previous two classes and come back here. Then only the link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, before going into the concept of deterministic finite automata, let's first understand what's finite automata means. Automation, we already know what automation means. If something happens without the intervention of the human, we call it as automation. The same way, finite automata, it is a system or machine that takes the inputs and performs some functions. So it is a system or machine that takes some inputs and performs some option, some functions without direct participation of a man. Then we call it as automata this then we the so if you are having finite states we call it as finite automata okay coming to the example this is the example in our last class we discussed about this example this example we call it as finite automata so let's how let's understand in depth what's uh, how why we call it as because uh, we are processing a string without the intervention of human that's why we call it as an automata how we are processing the string that explained in our previous class based on the assumption uh, you already know what this diagram is based on that we are explaining it uh, so if you don't know what's this diagram how we got this diagram uh, and how it is processing the strings uh, so please watch our previous classes and come back here coming to that uh, a finite automata can be defined analytically by a phi tuple means what's that phi tuple phi tuple here q sigma q naught f and delta what's this phi tuple let's try to understand one by one q is finite set of states uh, so we are having a finite set of states. This is our finite automata. In, in our example, we are having two states, Q1 and QF. So Q means our finite automata can be defined using a finite set of states. What are the states that are present in our example? Q1 and QF. And next one, Sigma is infinite, is a finite set of input symbols. We also call them as alphabets. In our example, this finite automata works on the input symbols 0 and 1. This finite automata will identify strings that contain character one at the end the last character should be one the, those type of inputs can be strings can be accepted by using this finite automata it will identify the strings that contains one at the end of the character the last character should be one so so this finite automata works only on input symbols zero and one so we call it as alphabets. Now coming to the next one, Q naught is initial state. Initial state, in our example, which state is the initial state? This is the initial state, this is the final state. So in if you want to represent the finite automata, where we have to start, that also should be represented because our logic starts from there. So Q1, from Q1 we will start. So initial state is Q0 is the initial state. In our example, Q0 initial state is Q1. F is set of final states. What are the list of final states that should be mentioned using F? F is a set of final state. In our example, we are having only one final state. Usually we can have multiple final states. Those examples will be discussed in our coming classes. For now, F means set of final states we can the point you have to understand we can have multiple final states okay these final states are subset of q q means states total states all states these final states are subset of q that's why we mentioned it as phi f subset of q now coming to the last one delta is mapping function we call it as mapping function or we call it as transition function it can be mentioned like this delta is given as a q cross sigma tends to z q means take a state from q q means set of all the states Q means set of all the states. Take a state from that. If you apply sigma means input symbols, alphabets. If you apply an input symbol on that state, we will move to a state from Q. We will move to the same state. We can move to the other state. We can move to any one state. That is what the we will mention it as Q cross sigma tends to Q. 
q means we are moving on to the next state it may be in a qf it may be q1 it may be q2 any other state from the set of states that present in q that's the point so one of the example q1 in our example this is our example on q1 if you find the input symbol 0 we are moving on to the state q1 the same state we are moving on q1 if you apply the input symbol 1 if you find the input symbol 1 we will move to the qf we are moving to the state qf so that is how we mention the transition function with this mapping function or transition function so this our our complete logic can be represented in two ways one is transition diagram so we, we will represent like this one is other one is transition table this diagram we already explained previously initial state is is shown like this arrow mark is shown on the initial state on the initial state and if you apply q1 zero input we have to move to q1 state if you apply one on q1 state we will move to qf state on qf state if you apply one we will move to qf state on qf if you seen the input symbol zero we move to q1 state this is how we mention the transition diagram the same diagram is placed in a tabular form that we call it as transition table so q1 0 q1 we are moving to state q q1 q1 if you apply input symbol one we will move to qf the same way qf also this is how we represent the finite automata now coming to the deterministic finite automata it is also a finite automata but it will follow few conditions it will follow two conditions what's those conditions means deterministic finite auto, uh, automata also represented in the same way using the phi tuple but it has to follow few conditions the two conditions that it should follow is every input should be defined a transition on each state every input symbol should be defined a transition on each state the meaning is a see in our example q1 how many different symbols we have input symbols we have 0 and 1 means on each state on q1 we mentioned a transition what should do if you if the input symbol has seen on q1 state if the input symbol 0 has seen on q1 we mentioned a transition like that you have to mention transition for each and every input symbol on every state so on q1 we mentioned about zero on q1 we mentioned about what should do if if you see the input symbol one the same way on qf if you mention we mentioned the input symbol zero on qf we mentioned the input symbol one both the symbols are mentioned on both the states if you follow this condition then we call it as deterministic finite automata and the next next condition also we have to follow these two conditions no input symbol causes to move more than one state example on q naught if you apply the input symbol if you are if you mention the input symbol if you had seen the input symbol one we are moving to state q naught and we are moving to state q1 see how many states we are moving to we are moving to two different states this is not accepted in deterministic finite automata you have to move exactly to only one state either you can move to q naught or you can move to q f sorry it's mentioned as q1 anyway this is the name of the q q1 you can move to a, any one state exactly one state you cannot take these two transitions at a time so this if you mention like this this won't comes to deterministic finite automata so deterministic uh, finite automata will follow these conditions our example which we discussed in our previous class it is a deterministic finite automata because it is following all the conditions mentioned by dfa in short we call it as dfa and one more way we can we can acceptability of the strings if you if you are given an input string if it you your finite automata is accepting the input string or not how we show that we will follow a method to show that it's a simple one delta of a transition function this is our q1 means we have to start at initial state this is our input string so we have given the all the input uh, all the characters in our input string assume that if very simple example is taken 101 q1 if you apply the input uh, symbol 1 this is our transition diagram q1 if you apply 1 which state we are moving we are moving to qf so q1 if you apply 1 we are moving to qf and the remaining inputs are 01 
so qf 0 1 on qf if you apply the input symbol 0 we are moving to the state q1 and the remaining input symbols remainder 1 on q1 if you apply 1 we are moving to qf input is over we end up at qf final state string is accepted this is how we will show the acceptance of the string whether the string given is accepted by the finite automata or not will be shown like this so this is one of the way hope you understand the concept of deterministic finite automata if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you